Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And this week, we're going to be talking about water kefir or kefir soda. Um, there, I have two different ways to make these probiotic sodas. And I, I want you to know about them because it's kind of unique to me. It's something that um, I do that not too many people do. Um, I have two different ways to make them. Some people make them the same way with one version, but then there's another version that's super easy too. And I wanted to talk to you about the difference between kefir soda and water kefir. Now, I love kefir soda, um, but it's a slightly different process than when you're making water kefir that is made from water kefir crystals. So um, you have to get a culture called water kefir crystals to make water kefir. And then you need to make a first ferment. First you ferment it. Um, and basically it's sugar and water and then the grains eat the sugar um, out of the water. And it's a two-step process because then if you want a flavor, then you've got a sep- second ferment it. Um, and you'll need to care for your water kefir crystals. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing to make. I love it. I have water kefir crystals and um, they're fun and easy to make. Um, and while I, I think it's wonderful, um, I have a faster way that I make kefir soda um, and I do it a lot, especially in the summertime, um, because it's so much easier and it's so much faster. And you can do it, once it gets going, you can do it in less than a day. And um, I did it just recently. I did a bunch um, with that I made a recipe for for, uh, for people to use their leftover candy from Halloween if they had hard candy or or, food, or candy like candy cane, candy corn. And you basically make kombucha and you put a few pieces inside your um your kefir, your kombucha, or your, you can also do this with this kefir soda and you let it ferment and eats the sugars out. It gives you this really wonderful flavor. And my family liked it so much. They were kind of fighting over it, over who got, who got the last of it. And so it was a great way to use up your hard candy. I'm not a fan of candy. I'm not a fan of the candies that you get at Halloween. I mean, we don't normally have those, but um, a lot of people do because they have kids and stuff. And uh, it's a great way to use up your extra candy and make it healthy. So, um, and then the microbes eat the sugar out of it and, but give you the flavor. So it's a lot of fun. And, and you can do that with kefir soda too, but let me tell you how to do that. And once again, kefir soda is different than water kefir. It tastes very similar. It tastes almost identical, but it's just made a different way. And it's far easier um, than caring for grains all the time if you want to do something super fast. So, um, if you make a bottle of kefir soda, you can have unlimited bottles from that one bottle because you can use a portion of that bottle, like a third of a cup, to make the next bottle. And it will make it in like less than a day. And it will just keep going forever if you do it on a regular basis. Um, I had one lady, when I first started learning to do this, I had one lady, she told me she'd made 50 bottles from one bottle. And she just kept going because her family drank it so fast. And um, it cultures super fast. It's kind of amazing the different flavors you can get and how much you can get for just making one bottle. Okay, so the difference between water kefir and kefir soda is the culture that you use. Now, kefir soda can be made two ways. It can be made with a culture, and I sell this culture. Um, and it's it's basically a kefir powder culture. It's not easy kefir. It's just this special powder that I get from Cultures for Health. And you can use it to do that, or you can make it from kefir whey. And that's when you take your kefir, your milk kefir, and you strain out um, the whey part by putting it in in a, um, you put it in, you put a little basket in your, a strainer, I mean, a strainer in your, in a bowl, and then you put a coffee filter in it, and then you pour kefir into it. And then you let the whey strain out. And that whey, that I call it the liquid gold. I have a lot of recipes with things to do with whey. And kefir soda is one of them. And so you can do either the powder package or you can do the kefir whey, either one. And um, I have step-by-step instructions on the recipe to show you exactly how to do it. It's super easy um, to, to make and enjoy. And it takes a little while to get the first bottle just because it has to culture and eat all the sugars and get active. But then after that, then you're off and running. Um, so don't use easy kefir. I have sell a powder easy kefir. That does not work because it has different cultures in it. It has so many uh, different strains of bacteria and yeast that it won't culture properly because 
when you're making a kefir soda, you want the good yeast to be predominantly um, dominant in your in your mix because that's what's going to make it bubbly. And um, it it does make good nut kefirs, like uh, non dairy milk kefirs, easy kefir does, but it's not good for kefir soda. So both both of these methods, whether you use the powder package I have, which is from Cultures for Health. Or um, you can use kefir whey. Both are great. Both are easy. Both are fun. So if you have a lot of kefir, milk kefir, and you want to make some kefir soda, you're in luck because you already have the culture. So just find the one that's easiest for you. And uh, both are going to be loaded with probiotics. And they're so much better for you than any store-bought soda. And be it diet soda or those filled with high fructose corn syrup, those store-bought sodas can cause so many problems like skin rashes due to the brominated vegetable oil, brain fog, headaches, memory loss, metabolic syndrome. Um, it's just, it's a mess what these sodas do. And I'm trying to promote these healthy sodas because, you know, they've been around for forever. It's what people used to drink because their water wasn't safe and they would ferment their, their drinks. You know, they drank a lot of wines and a lot of things, but they also made these types of drinks because what would happen is the good bacteria would dominate, kill any pathogenic bacteria in the water and make this bubbly drink that the people love. So, you know, 67% more likely for you to get diabetes if you're drinking one diet soda a day. And I've seen this a lot lately. And diet soda affects the, your gut bacteria very negatively. Um, it increases your insulin and in your sensitivity to sugars and things like that skyrocket. Um, it can cause blood sugar spikes. And when a person eats carbohydrates, it increases their waist circumference and body fat, especially if they're drinking sodas, whether it's diet or regular sodas. And this can make your insulin sensitivity and blood sugar management so much worse. And contrast this with the fermented probiotic sodas, which increase your good gut flora and contain very, very little sugar. Because remember, the sugar that's in the drinks is not for you. It's for the microbes. They're eating it. They consume most of the sugar in all these drinks. And they promote health. They give you good bacteria. They give you good gut flora. And you can taste and feel the difference because the, the uh, carbonation that occurs is naturally occurring carbonation. It's not forced carbonation. And it tastes so good. So if you're missing the bubbliness of sodas, this is your ticket because it's delicious. Um, it's really, really important if you're going to make these sodas to use really thick bottles made for brewing, like Groshlin bottles. They're like beer bottles. Or you can use leftover kombucha bottles from GT Synergy Kombucha. It has great ones. Those are thick glass. They're made for brewing. They do really well. If you buy the cheaper glass, they can explode. And um, you got to be really careful with that. So you always want to use good bottles made for brewing. Um, I like to use the 32 ounce. You can use 16 ounce, but the 32 ounce is what I use in all my recipes because we drink it so fast. If I drink, make the small ones, it's gone. So um, you can buy amber bottles. You can buy clear bottles. You can buy them. I'll put some links in the description below, below because you can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them at brew shops that are locally available to you. They probably have the best prices because you can buy in quantity. And I think that's what I did when I first got started. Um, but one of the things you need to do, you need to, to check your bottles every day by popping the top when you're making this. Once it starts to get bubbly, it'll fizz out the bottle, you'll know it's ready. But you wanna release the pressure a little bit. So I pop them every day just to check to make sure they're not ready because they're very fickle about when they're done. It depends on your temperature, the strength of your culture. Um, it just kinda has a mind of its own. It can take anywhere from two days to seven days. It just depends on how warm your house is. So you want to check them often to see if they're bubbly because once they're bubbly, they're ready to go. So the first method is kefir soda. And let me tell you how easy this is. And then I'm going to send you the link so you can go uh, look at the recipe and see the step-by-step -step instructions. So what you need is you need some kefir whey. Let's do this with kefir whey, the first one, the first method. And you'll need a half a cup of kefir whey. And that's the kefir that's you strain it from your regular kefir. You put a strainer in a bowl, put a coffee filter in there, pour your kefir in, and let the whey drip to the bottom. That's the kefir whey. And you want to use fresh kefir whey that's been strained within a day or two because that's when it's going to have the most probiotics. If you use older kefir whey, 
it, a lot of the good yeast die once it's separated from the curds and kefirs, so you won't have the strength to make you a good soda. So you need a half a cup of kefir whey, and you need a half a cup and a half of fresh juice, and it can be fresh juice from the store, frozen or bottled. Um, you can melt the frozen and use that, or just bottled juice. But you guys really check the labels on these bottled juices. I cannot tell you how many times I have found Splenda in a bottle that I didn't know, the artificial sweetener, that I didn't know was in it because it didn't really tell me that. And so then it wouldn't culture because there was no sugar in it. So, and you don't want it with Splenda anyway because it's not good for you, but it won't culture. So make sure it's 100% fruit juice. And you can do fresh ones that you squeeze yourself or frozen. They all work. Just make sure that it's real juice. And then you'll need um, just two cups of water. And you put all three of those. I used like to use a little funnel into one of those 32-ounce uh, bottles, the thick ones made for brewing. They kind of have the pop tops. They're the best ones. And uh, you can't really use candy jars because they leak. Um, they don't keep the pressure in. It doesn't work as well as these types of bottles that are made for brewing. Um, but you put a, okay, so one and a half cups of fresh juice, half a cup of kefir whey, and two cups of water. Throw that all in the bottle and put the lid on it. And then you let it sit for two to, two to five days. It can take longer than that, depending on the strength of your whey, the temperature in your home. If your home is 75 degrees or warmer, it usually takes about four to five days. Colder homes will take a lot longer. They can take up to two weeks um, if your house is really cold. But just check it every day. And once it starts to get busy, it'll start to bubble out the top, and then you'll know it's ready, and then you want to place it in the fridge right away. Um, and you can pour a delicious glass. And uh, it's it's really fun to make. So, And always save a little bit of your bottle, like a third, of, third to a fourth of a cup. And uh, then you can make another bottle right away using the same ingredients. So you have a third of a bottle left, add some more fruit juice and add some more water and then ferment it again, but it will be done in less than a day. It will be so active that the bottle will be ready. So you can make a bottle in less than a day and it's really fun. Make sure you check that pressure because it's going to get really bubbly and then stick it in the fridge and that kind of slows it down a little bit. Okay, the second method um, is just when you use the uh, starter culture. And I'll link the description below. It's really inexpensive and you get four packages of it, but one package will make you a gazillion bottles if you do it on a regular basis. And um, it's the same thing. You just add juice to a measuring cup and mix in the starter culture and then put it in the bottle. And then you add um, two cups of water. And so you have one and a half cups of juice, two cups of water, and you could add a little bit more juice since you're not using kefir whey, or you can add a little bit more water. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then you just put it in one of those tall bottles, just like you did with the kefir whey, and you put the lid on it, and you ferment it for two to five days. So each of these recipes only has three ingredients. And you can change the flavor of the juice, um, and it really does make a difference, uh, you know, which some juices ferment faster, uh, for instance, Orange juice ferments really fast. Um, lemon juice, you if you're going to do lemon juice, then you're going to have to add a sweetener because there's not very much sugar in lemon juice. So you're going to have to add a couple teaspoons of sugar in it to let the microbes have something to eat to make it bubbly. Um, but like pomegranate juice is delicious. Cranberry juice is delicious, but make sure the cranberry might need a little bit of sugar if, it's, if it doesn't have very much on the label. Um, but even at that, it still is good, even without the, without adding anything to it. Um, grape juice is one of my all-time favorites. White grape juice is my kid's favorite. Um, we've made so many different kinds, uh, but it is absolutely delicious. And I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step instructions on, on my recipe. Um, but we have a lot of kefir soda recipes, and I'll link these two below. We have, let me tell you a few of them. We have apple kefir soda. Um, we have a balsamic pear kefir soda. It is so good. that I just had that last year. My daughter made that. I was just addicted to it. It was so good. Uh, a cherry kefir soda daiquiri. That's really, really good. We have a cherry lime kefir soda, a coconut kefir um, mojito, which is like a mocktail. It's not alcoholic, but it kind of tastes like it. 
Um, we have a coconut water kefir. We have a coconut water kefir saffron lemonade. Cucumber kefir soda, which by the way is really, really good and refreshing. The grape ginger kefir soda and just a plain kefir soda without the ginger. Uh, we have a happy new year kefir soda. You'll have to check that out. The holidays are coming up. And I love that happy new year's kefir soda. That's so good. We have an Italian ice kefir soda where you mix a couple ingredients into your finished thing. We have a Christmas kefir soda, which is super bubbly. It tastes like Christmas. We have a kefir whey lemonade soda, a lemon lime kefir soda, orange Julius kefir soda, a pomegranate kefir soda, strawberry ginger ale coconut kefir, and a strawberry kefir soda. We have a bunch of different recipes. And um, we have a lot of fun making these recipes too. And guys, it, it's three ingredients and it takes... You know, the first bottles can take anywhere from two to seven days. And then after that, it's a day. It takes a day and you can just keep it going um, in your fridge and it won't last very long because people will love it. It's so delicious. So I really want the world to stop drinking regular soda and to start to drink these probiotic sodas because honestly, Pete, they're good. <laughs> they are so delicious and they're so much better for you. And I have seen soda, regular soda pop, really wreak havoc on, on a lot of kids. Um, I think it's affected. My my husband has a cousin who's just drank so much soda when he was a kid. I mean, gallons and gallons of it. And he wound up with severe diabetes and all of his teeth went, were bad. And it's, it's hard on your thyroid. It's so hard on you. And um, if we can just get some good microflora in our guts, and make it in a delicious way. It's just it's just so much fun. There's so many wonderful things you can do with it. And uh, kids love this stuff. And I'm seeing kefir soda pop up on menus at places now. And I've seen um, places that sell kefir soda. We have several places here that sell it. And it's a really fun alternative to regular pop. And, it, and I'll tell you what, having a glass gives me a lift in the afternoon. It is so helpful to me. Um, I just love to have it. It's kind of a treat. And if I'm kind of tired in the afternoon because I've been working all day, uh, kefir soda does the trick. That and kombucha, both of them do a really good job. So I hope you give it a whirl. I hope you give it a try. i got lots of recipes, lots of fun tips for you. I always have everything, you know, how to make these types of things free on my website at culturefoodlife.com. So if you head on over there, you'll see that and I'll also put it in the link description below. Um, but I'm trying to get the world to drink probiotic drinks instead of uh, probiotic soda instead of real soda. It's so much better for you and it changes you, makes you feel better, makes you healthier, makes your gut flora healthier. And when you do, when that's healthy, you feel better. Um, and that also helps you, your mood, um, your emotions. Um, it keeps everything working properly like it should. And this is a fun and easy way to do it that tastes fantastic. So thanks for listening, guys. And I hope you'll give it a world. Send me an email if you do or or tag me on Instagram at culturefoodlife.com or culturefoodlife. Um, and it's uh, post your pictures and uh, post your sodas because um, it encourages other people to do it too. So have a great one and we will see you next week.